This is our season of covenant power. He says that he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. We need power to draw the heavenly realm blessing and make it an earthly reality. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We need power. Praise the Lord. And this is our season of covenant power. Every blessing that is in the heavenly realms, we will draw it down and make it our earthly reality in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's Ephesians 1 3. And the Passion Translation puts it like this Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished. Can somebody say, been lavished? Upon us as a love gift from our wonderful Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Has all the what lavished. Hallelujah. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? All because God sees us wrapped up into Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This month in the name of Jesus, this month we receive power to draw down the blessings from the heavenly realm into our earthly reality. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody says, I'm receiving power to draw down my heavenly blessings into my earthly reality. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What I'm going to do now, because of time, and I want the Holy Spirit also to give Holy Spirit time to express himself, what I'm going to do is just to try and read the scriptures that God is going to talk to us from. So the first one is from Ephesians 1, starting from verse 18. The other one is Ephesians 3, starting from verse 16. The other one is Joshua 1 and 8. Praise the Lord. Joshua 1 8. So let's just go to Ephesians 1 18. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Karabo Shatter. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1. And I'm starting to read from verse 18. So I'm going to read all three and then we'll start talking about it. I believe that God will help us with time so that we do everything we have to do. Hallelujah. And we're blessed by it in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 1, 18, and I start to read. I'm going to read 18 to 21. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. See, each time I read this verse, I have a kind of excitement in my spirit. Because there's a translation that says that God has been made rich by me. There's a translation, I think it's God's word. I'm not sure which translation. But it says his inheritance in his holy people. That is, we are God's inheritance. And that always excites me. Because you see, who was I speaking to the other day? Who said, oh, my father died about three years ago and left me an inheritance, so I used it to buy a house. And to think that you and I, we, God considers us his inheritance, that is something he has inherited, something that enriches him, I find that very exciting. Personally for me, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it says that, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Somebody say incomparably great power. Incomparably great power. I just want to have a little bit of an analogy. I think it was on Friday or Thursday. I can't remember what day it was. My husband was dropping me off at the station and we saw this baby Mercedes. I think Mercedes, this A-series. 
And he started mocking the car. And I said, and he said, oh, so if other people say Mercedes, this car will also come out and say it is Mercedes. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? It has the Mercedes, the engine. I said, what? This one? That it does not have the power of Mercedes. That how can it? I said, ha. I said, hey. so you know, and he went on oh, no, saying that. So if this Mercedes. People call Mercedes that this car will also come and stand. I said, yes, it will stand. But he was trying to make a point that that car, it doesn't have the same power as what we see, you know, when you see the Mercedes in all its, you know, glory and the ones that cost like 200,000 pounds, you know. But what we're trying to say is that God's power is incomparable. There is power and there is power. Hallelujah. God's own power is what? Incomparable. Hallelujah. And that incomparably great power is for us that believe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He says that same power is the, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority. Far above all power and dominion, far above every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. An incomparably great power that sits far above every authority, every dominion, every rule. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what you're facing, it doesn't matter who you're going for before, as long as you carry that power. You have a power that is above it. Have a power that will speak on your behalf. Have a power that will move and shift things to give you the space you need to move. Can I hear an hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us go to Ephesians chapter 3. Praise the Lord. And I read from verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with what power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Hallelujah. Strengthen you with what power through what his spirit in what your inner being, that what Christ may dwell. <laughs> that Christ will come and find a place to rest where in your inner being, so that when he lives in you. As you walk, Christ is walking. As you talk, Christ is talking. Hallelujah. But he needs you to have power. Hallelujah. You need strength to receive Christ to dwell in you. And I pray that you be rooted and established in love. May have what? Power again. Together with all the saints. To grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Hallelujah. Now you all know that this is one of my favorite phrases in scripture. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. That you may be filled to the measure. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Says now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to Joshua 1 8. The Holy Ghost will help us tie it all up together. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit will help us tie it all up together. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua 1 and verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be what? Prosperous and what successful. Hallelujah. So let's begin the discourse. Hallelujah. Say with me this month, I receive power 
to draw down the blessings from the heavenly realm into my earthly reality. Hallelujah. So the first scripture that we took was a prayer that we will know the incomparably great power God has for those who believe. The question is, do you believe? Hallelujah. He says there's an incomparably great power for those who believe. If you believe, if you truly believe, then this incomparably great power is at work for you. Hallelujah. To draw down your heavenly blessings into your earthly reality. I've just used the analogy of the baby bands and the wheel bands. <laughs> it is wheel bands, but yeah, it's baby bands, isn't it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know, I know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I mean, there's a very sad story that happened during the week where, you know, those cement, um, and those heavy concrete cement things knocked down a, 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 a cyclist. Sadly, she lost her life. She was actually declared dead at the scene. So, you know, the, 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 you can see the heavy power of that. And you know, if you're driving and one of them is coming close to you, you, you respect yourself. If, 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 whether you have the, the body bends <laughs> or the C-class <laughs> or the bulldozer one, hallelujah, but you respect yourself. But what I'm just trying to say is that God's incomparable great power is able to bulldoze anything that stands in the way of your success. Amen. Praise the Lord. Every obstacle Hallelujah. Anything like sickness, depression, unemployment, divorce, disappointment, even death. Hallelujah. He will bulldoze that to bring you to your place of victory. Hallelujah. He says it's the same. The Bible says that the, 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 the power is the same as the mighty strength that God exerted when he raised Jesus from the dead. There was no death situation. When that power is at work in your life, there is no dream that can die when that power is at work in your life. There is no plan that you have committed to God and that you are following that can be derailed when that power is at work in your life. Hallelujah. So from heavenly realm to earthly reality. From heavenly realm to earthly reality. This month, your blessings in the heavenly realm will become your earthly reality in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So how can this happen? How can the blessings in the earthly realm reach and come and become our earthly reality? We need power. For that to happen, we need power to carry Christ always. He says that pray that out of his glorious riches, he would give you power by his spirit so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Hallelujah. So we need to carry Christ always. He needs to be comfortable to dwell in our hearts. So we need strength to make the environment of ourselves and our hearts make it conducive for Christ to dwell. Hallelujah. That is why it says that may through his glorious riches strengthen us with all power through his spirit. Hallelujah. So that Christ will dwell in our hearts through faith. So that's one of the things we need to carry Christ always for that to happen. For that to happen, we need to be united in love. God's kind of love. See that you would have power together with God's people to know, to grasp and know this love that surpasses knowledge. Hallelujah. 
praise the Lord. To understand this kind of love that is, can someone please put it up for me? Ephesians 3, so that we can just read it one more time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Karabo Shekeri Baba. Ephesians 3 from verse 16, 17, 18, thereabouts. Can we go down to 17? Can we go to, okay, stay, stay there. So that Christ may dwell in, and I pray that you be rooted and established in love, yes, 18, may have power together with all the saints to do what? Grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Hallelujah. We need to power to understand God's kind of love. God is love. And everything he has done, he has done on the basis of love. The Bible tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Everything God did, he did on the basis of love. Hallelujah. So we need to understand this love that is so total. It is a total kind of love that it reaches every corner of our experience it is wide it covers the breadth of our own experience and it reaches out to the whole world god's love is long it continues the length of our lives hallelujah it is high it rises to the heights of our celebration and relation praise the lord his love is deep it reaches to the depths of discouragement despair even death Hallelujah. His love is total. And that is the kind of love we need to know. So that when we are with one another, we are celebrating. When they are in their heights of elation, when they, when they are happy, we are walking through with them every step of the way, all their life, their life. You know, to finish it for me. All their life. Every step of the way. Oh, thank you. Their life's journey. Thank you. We are with them every step of the way. Through their life's journey, we are always with them. And when discouragement hits, because life happens, life happens, it can lift you high. You are the top shining, and sometimes it can happen and bring you really down. We are there showing God's love, even at that time. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Am I speaking the truth of life's experience this morning? Amen. So that is the kind of love that we show. The kind of love. The God kind of love. It never leaves us. So we need power to be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And then we also need power. To know that in Christ we are limitless. He is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or think. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So all this power that we need, the power that we need to have Christ dwell in us. The power that we need to love, as, to love one another, to walk in unity. The power that we need to understand his God kind of love. The power that we need that, to, that he fills us fully with all the measure. The power that we need to understand that we are limitless. That nothing can stand in our way. Because sometimes when you're walking through life, you know he said our, our hymn, from Psalm 23, when I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I know you are with me. It doesn't mean that the area around you is not dark. But because you know that God is with you, you will fear no evil. Praise the Lord. So how do we know that we are limitless, irrespective of the challenges around us, irrespective of that disappointment, you, there's a job you are really looking out for. You have planned, you have prepared, you've prayed, you did your best. You went there and they said, ah, somebody just peeped you to the post. How do you know and not let that crush you and know that you can still walk through, that you know that God, his incomparably great power 
when the time is right, can move every peeping of the post individual and sit you in your place. How do you carry that? Even, even though you had prayed and you had really believed, how do you carry it? How do you do that? Praise the Lord. Joshua 1.8 tells us how. Praise the Lord. It tells us how. It tells us how we can make the heavenly realm goodies our earthly realities. It tells us how. Praise the Lord. The Amplified says, the, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have what? Good success. That's how the Amplified puts it. It says, then you shall, hallelujah, when you meditate day and night, and you observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous. You shall make it. You shall draw the heavenly goodies from the heavenly realm, making it your earthly reality. Hallelujah. And then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Praise the Lord. The message says, And don't for a minute let this book of the revelation be out of your mind. Ponder and meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. Then you'll get where you're going and you'll succeed. Praise the Lord. So there are three things that would help us have the power we need to draw the blessings from the heavenly realm and make it our earthly realities. Three things I want to show us from Joshua 1.8. The first is very obvious. It's make the study of God's word a constant part of your life. Make the study of God's word a constant part of your life. Now listen to this shocking statistic. In a survey commissioned by the Church of England in, England in 2017, so this is not way, way back, 2017, 55% of people who identified as Christian, so these are people who ask, are you Christian? They say yes. Never read the Bible. Hallelujah. 20, 29% never pray. And 33% never go to church. Only 6% of adults in Britain said they were practicing Christians. Hallelujah. Only six. Praise the Lord. Imagine going to a doctor when you are sick and getting a prescription that can make you well. The instructions say take three times a day, but you only take it once a week or when you feel like it or never at all. Would you blame the doctor for not getting well? Some of us do that with God. Hallelujah. We say, Lord, why has this happened to me? I don't understand it. Would you say that the medicine doesn't work? Not if you don't take it. Hallelujah. Hosea 4, 6 says that my people are perish. For what? For lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. I like how the New Living Translation translates that lack of knowledge. It says, because they don't know me. Hallelujah. Apostle Peter said in his book, he says he has given us all things that pertain to what? Life. Through what? Our knowledge of what? Him. Who has done what? Called us. Hallelujah. Hall Through our knowledge of him who has called us. So it's by knowing him, praise the Lord, that we know what to do. Remember how the message puts the end of Joshua 8. He says that, then you will know where you are going. Then you will succeed. Hallelujah. The Amplified Version says, then you shall deal wisely and have good success. You can't deal wisely 
if you don't have knowledge. You have to have the knowledge first to be able to deal wisely. Hallelujah. So the first thing I want us to do is that we need to make the study of God's word a constant part of our lives. Hallelujah. So that we get into God's word and his word gets into us. Praise the Lord. So that we can get into his word and his word word gets into us. So that Christ will dwell in our hearts by faith. So that when they see Mama Yeti, what they see is Christ. And that when Christ is speaking, they cannot resist the glory by which you are speaking. So you face a situation and you are there and you are carrying Christ. Ah, you want to do your, is it Viva? Prof at the back. Aha. Uh -huh. Our doctor in the making. Praise the Lord. When you go, you open your mouth. Christ speaks. They cannot resist. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The second thing, meditate on it day and night. I've said, let the word in. Hallelujah. Let it fill you. Praise the Lord. Let the word in. So, so that we get into the word and the word gets into us. So we let the word in and we let the word fill us. Praise the Lord. The word meditate means to ponder, remunerate. Rem no, mommy. <laughs> Ruminate. I couldn't even read what. Ruminate or examine attentively. So don't just read the scriptures. We need to thoroughly digest them. We need to ask the Holy Spirit, open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. You can read a scripture dozens of times and suddenly see something you've never seen before. The idea is that we train our minds to see things from God's viewpoint. Remember Joshua and the people of Ai. I hope you remember that story. Very quickly, these people came looking tattered. They only lived a short distance away. But they came looking tattered and told one story. And normally, Joshua would always inquire. But this time, he just took their word verbatim. And then he made a covenant with them. But the thing is that he made that covenant not knowing that he had already planned had he sought God's face in that thing, God would have let him know that they are only a short distance away. When we see things from God's perspective, then it helps us cope with the challenges of life. When we see things from God's perspective, when you are the richest man in the world, you know that money means nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you see things from God's perspective, and like the analogy I used or the example I used earlier, you've gone for a job or you're trying to close a business deal and you believe it's all in the bag and something goes wrong, you know that God is on your side. You know he's able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine. You know that he loves you and that his desire is that you can succeed. So you know that this disappointment is only temporary. Even though you wished it and wanted it so badly, but God who knows the end from the beginning, the one who completely surrounds you, knows that there is something better ahead for you. And he's the one who knows how to compensate you. He says that the years that the canker worm has stolen, he will compensate. Do I hear an hallelujah? Do I hear an hallelujah? Do I hear an hallelujah? hallelujah? Praise the Lord. The idea is that by letting the word of God in and letting it fill you, you begin to train your mind to see things from God's viewpoint. Hallelujah. So rather than react to this disappointment, you begin to act in line of God's word. Because by reacting to the disappointment, it means that you belittle God's power in your life. 
you weaken that power. And, and in reacting to that disappointment, it means that you, you, you don't give God the space to move because you are moving with your own head. But if you act in line with the word that fills you, ah, uh-huh, you now allow God rev the power. Hallelujah. He begins to rev it. He begins to rev it. Hallelujah. And then you see yourself bulldoze through that disappointment to your place of victory. Do I hear an hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mark Twain, a popular author, said in the olden days, said that the two best days in a person's life are the day they are born. Hallelujah. And the day they discover why they are born. Praise the Lord. The day you discover your purpose, why has God placed you? And you begin to walk in line with that purpose. You see, everything becomes becomes irrelevant. Even sleep becomes irrelevant. Praise the Lord. Because you know you need to do something. It's just like you need to catch a plane. Now, you know you have to catch a plane. So, even if you have to get up at 3 to catch your plane, and you only went to bed at 1, you will still get up at that 3. Praise the Lord. But when you don't have anything to do, or when whatever it is is not important, you say, ah, I went to bed at 1 o'clock, and I just woke up at 10 in the morning. Because... You know, whatever it is that you have to do, you have decided that it's not a priority. Praise the Lord. But a plane that you have to catch, sleep at one. Even if you are dreaming, three o'clock you will wake up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the only person that can tell you what your purpose is, is our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. The only way you can hear him it's if you take time to listen. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 30, 20 says, Love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice. Hold fast to him, for the Lord is your life. Praise the Lord. The third thing is be careful to do everything written in it. Hallelujah. Leave it out. Leave it out. Hallelujah. Let it fill you. Let it in, let it feed, then leave it out. Praise the Lord. That is practice what you've studied. Practice what you've memorized. Practice what you've meditated on. Hallelujah. Very quickly, James 1, to 25 says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. James 1, 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. (laughs) It was only afterwards that I realized that God used me to give an, an illustration to this. There's a dress that I had planned to wear today. So, I searched for the dress. I couldn't find it. So, after I had finished preparing that, that was yesterday afternoon, I looked. I said, where is this dress? Could it be in one of the suitcases? I said, no, it was in wardrobe. So, I searched. I didn't find it. I went through every line by line. Okay. So, I finished preparing the message in the early hours of the morning and I still remember the dress. I said, aha, this dress, where is it? Let me just take one last look. I said, okay, now that sleep is not quite coming, this was maybe around three, four, let me just quickly have a look, you know. So I brought down, checked suitcase. My husband got up to use the loo, looked at me, I looked at him, he went his way. (laughs) I brought down. So this morning he started asking me, where are you? What were you doing? I said, there's this dress that I said, I've been looking for it, blah, blah, blah. So I then did my alternatives and all that. So, And there was something I now needed to get in the wardrobe. And I now went down. It hadn't fallen down. No, 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 no. And then I now saw the dress. Do you know what? My, the dress was more black in my head. The dress was more black than white. 
But in my, what I remembered of it, even though it's my dress and I had worn it, I was looking for something that was more white than black. So I didn't see it. It was black and white. So the person who looks in the mirror intently, and you've seen yourself, seen your face, seen the color of your hair, and then you, within seconds, you forget what you look like. I'm trying to say to you that you are not doing what God would have you do. When we read God's word, when we meditate on it and it lives in us and we live it out, then we draw the power to make the blessings of the heavenly realm our earthly reality. I'm not wearing that dress today because I did not remember that it was more black than white. In my mind's eye, when I saw the dress, I saw it more white than black. So I was looking for something white with black in it, rather than looking for something black with white in it. Karabosa. So God has used that experience to open my eyes to the truth. We need to see and meditate and live it out so that we can draw power to bring down the blessings in the heavenly realm and make it our earthly reality. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoever looks intently into the perfect law, verse 25, that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have had, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So yes, we need to study the Bible. We need to meditate on the Bible. We need to even memorize the Bible. But if we want to find success in life, we must obey the Bible. We must translate truth into action. Hallelujah. No one can guarantee you success except God. And that guarantee is found in reading, meditating, and obeying his word. Hallelujah. Value and worth are directly related to purpose. Hallelujah. Value and worth are directly related to purpose. A car that won't run is worthless. A car that won't run is worthless. It doesn't matter how much that car is. If it will not run, it's worthless. A pen that won't write is useless. Hallelujah. So if you've bought it to write, it's useless. If you've bought it for decoration to put in your, that's fine. But if the purpose is for it to write, then it's useless if it won't write. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. C.S. Lewis, one of the greats that I, because he was, a, you know, C.S. Lewis was an intellectual. You know, he was an Oxford intellectual. So, and then he became a Christian apologist. He now began to show people, you know, those intellects that said there was no God. He now began to show them. So he is a Christian apologist. And this is one of the things because he came to Christ late in life. Praise the Lord. He says, he who has God and everything has no more than the person who has God alone. Hallelujah. He who has God and everything has no more than the person who has God alone. With God comes everything. So he who has God and everything has no more than the person who has God alone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just want to thank God. And we want to thank God that we will receive the power that we need to activate that power. You see, you have a car. You need to put the key and start the engine and then ha let it have power to move, isn't it? This is our season of covenant power. The key we have is what I have just described. We need to meditate on the word of God. We need to let that word come into us. So we need to know it first. Constantly going to it. So don't just read it casually. Take time to meditate on it. You know, even if you find an area, say once a week, I will memorize and meditate on one 
particular scripture once a week. The truth is that by the end of the year, you have 52 scriptures. And it's just one powerful things that can move you. So the key we need to move this power is to read, meditate, and live out. So we read, we meditate, we live it out. Praise the Lord. That is the key to this power that is hovering. The power that we need to draw our heavenly blessings and make them our earthly reality. Praise the Lord. So we're going to pray, but in praying, we're just going to pray with our communion and then with the anointing. So if we can just at this time, at this time, let us just, you know, give out the communion elements. Hallelujah. For I receive from the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. For I receive from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hallelujah. What struck me when I read this was in remembrance, in remembrance, in remembrance. And I realized that one purpose of the Holy Ghost is to remind us of all that God has taught us. Hallelujah. God has taught us that we have to draw power. Hallelujah. We have to draw power. We have power to draw down our blessings. Hallelujah. From the heavenly realm into our earthly reality. As we partake of this communion today, we receive power to be constant students of God's words. Hallelujah. We receive power to meditate. We receive power to let the word of God in. We receive power to be a reflection of him in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Karabo Sanda. So that whatever it is that we have learned, hallelujah, we will succeed in drawing down our heavenly blessings into our earthly realities in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that as we take communion, as we partner with the Holy Ghost, as we partner with the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will succeed in our spiritual lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We will not forget who we are. We will not forget whose we are in the mighty name of Jesus. We have power to overcome every challenge life throws out at us. Whether it be the challenge of discouragement, the challenge of depression, because we have the word of God in us, our mindset will be to act in line with God's word in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. His body was broken for us that we might be healed. His blood was shed for us that we might be made whole. Father, we thank you. And as we take it, Lord, we receive power, power, power to draw down our blessings from the heavenly realm into our spiritual reality in the mighty name of Jesus. We receive power to draw down the blessings, our blessings in the heavenly land because he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. We receive power to draw those blessings down from the heavenly realm into our spirit, earthly reality in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We may take the communion.
Harabushi keri da 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 da. Boshende kiri anamasunto. Father, we thank you for this anointing, O oh Lord. As we anoint ourselves, Lord, we are also declaring and receiving power from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.